I'm here with Axel Rudipel to talk about his upcoming new record, Risen Symbol, out June 14th on Steam Hammer SPV. How are things going with you? How is life treating you? Uh, not so bad, not too bad at the moment. <laughs> no, I'm great. You know, I have, a, have to do a lot of interviews now, as you can imagine, you know, because the record is close to be out next next month. Yeah, in three weeks or so. A couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Couple of weeks, and then it's out, and uh, it will be number one in every country in the world. <laughs> that's what that's what we can all hope for. I, I'm 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 hoping that for you. I'm wishing you all the best with this release, and and let's start with that. Uh, how long have you been working on this album? Um, two weeks. <laughs> no, you mean in the studio, or you mean right? Yeah, yeah. Like overall, like like when when did the 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 process, the creative process, started for you putting the these songs together? Uh, you know, recently, uh, you know. Normally, I'm, when I'm out of the studio, just closing the door, going back home with all my gear, my, packing up my guitars, going back home, whatever. Then I pick up the guitar after a couple of days, relaxing, and suddenly I play a little just for for practicing a bit. You know, suddenly a risk comes to my mind, and I always have, I always have the cell phone with me. With the cell phone, there's a voice recorder in there, and I record everything when the riff is great, just to have it. You know, just ten minutes later, the telephone rings and it's out of my mind. So. Just to have it there, and then I later I never uh, listen back to all these kind of little bits of pieces and pieces and snippets. You know, sometimes I'm at the grocery store or buying some meat, and when a melody comes to my mind, I pull out my cell phone and I sum it into the to the voice recorder. People think this guy is nuts, you know, but I don't give a shit. I don't care, you know. So I'm collecting these little bits and pieces over a period of several months, and then I sit down and make a big sheet of paper and say, okay, idea number three. Fits perfectly to idea number 38, whatever. And I put these songs together. And that takes me six, seven, or eight weeks. And then I'm doing demos and where I record every song I wrote and with all guitars, with bass, uh, with little keyboards, uh, just two finger keyboards, you know, just to get the idea going. And put my own vocals on it. I write the melody lines. And then I write, uh, then I play everything and I uh, write the lyrics for it. So, so that it's a progress between seven, seven or eight weeks. And then everything's done. And then I go to the studio with my demos and uh, my engineer, he all puts it into the Pro Tools system, into the Mac. And then I start, uh, Bobby's coming over. Bobby's living in New York. You know, he's coming over. He playing the drums. So he played every song to him. He said, whoa, that's cool, baby. I know exactly what you want me to play there. And he hits the drums, you know. And that's great, you know. And so the next one come, the keyboard player, the bass player. The vocal, uh, vocal Johnny singing in America in his own studio little box he calls it the box <laughs> he's doing all the vocals there um i don't have to pay his uh, expensive flight for that you know he can do it there no problem with skyping and zooming and uh, going on the phone and i explain everything to him normally everything's fine so in the recording process we started actually on the fourth of fourth of december last year uh okay. we we recorded everything to christmas to i think the second 22nd of uh, december then we took a break over Christmas and New Year's Eve, and we're starting the mixing process. I process, I think it was six or seven of January for our 12 days. And then everything was done, the mastering afterwards, and then I delivered everything to the record company, and they are very satisfied. <laughs> As they should be after all that hard work. So Thank so you. let me ask you this. When it when it comes to the music that you've created, there is You've been doing this for a very long time. So with this longevity and this career and the this discography, there's a certain level of expectations that fans will have from a from an album that you release. Do those expectations uh, weigh on your shoulders? Do you think about what people expect from you even before you start putting a record together? No, I don't give a shit, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I write songs and when I personally think, wow, this is a cool idea. I like it by myself, then probably I think about it, oh, maybe the people will like it too. You know, sometimes it have, it never happened that I, suddenly I wrote a jazz riff or, or whatever, you know, or free jazz or what, I don't know. So it's not coming from the heart then. When I change the style of myself, then I would be untrue to myself and to the audience. So I always, you know, I'm glad that I found the ARP style, you know, it's typical riffing, whatever. But this time, uh, you know, the difference between this album the new album, Risen Symbol, and the former ones is definitely that, uh, you know, normally I write a song about a riff, uh, there's a verse, a chorus, uh, whatever, a solo, and then a riff again. 
And now I, I, I say to myself, maybe I can, can include another riff, which has nothing to do with one, one with the other riff, you know? So I created, for example, I think uh, in a couple of tracks, we have three, four, five different guitar rhythm tracks on that. And that makes it very interesting, in my opinion. So I don't know. Yeah. It, w w did this change, did this idea of changing the, that, adding those riffs into a single song, did that change the way you approach the recording and the composition of the song as well? Yeah, definitely. Yes. I'm sitting, I'm doing everything at home, you know. But what, what happened was uh, in the song Ankaya, you know, this is very, very uh, Led Zeppelin influence, as you probably might hear, a little bit of Rainbow Stargazer in there, whatever. Uh, when, when I wrote it, I, I went to the studio and then I said to, to Bobby, the drummer, he played to it. I said, I think we definitely need another part in the middle, an orchestra part. He looked at me and said, are you kidding? I said, no, 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 I'm serious. And and I had in mind, I once uh, I watched this uh, DVD by Jimmy Page and Robert Plant called Unleaded. I think it was recorded in 95, 96. I, I'm not sure about that year. And they did a, a, a version of Kashmir, of their great song Kashmir, with an Egyptian orchestra. And I said, I have to find it. And we watched it on YouTube in the studio. I said, you know what I mean? I need that. Not the same, but in the, in the same vein, you know? Oh, and wow. he said, yeah, you know what you mean? That sounds interesting. Yeah, let's do it. And he played the percussion with the fingers and stuff. And later my keyboard player plays all the different instruments and the melody, of course, was in my head. So that was great, but that was only one, uh, one excuse. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you look back at, all that hard work, all of that process. Is, is there a part uh, of putting a record together that, that you enjoy the most? And there's is there a part that you enjoy the least? Maybe the interviews you enjoy the least. <laughs> you know, I have to do it. It's part of the job. And you, you're a nice guy. You know, I, you know, it did so much for us. You know, you, you wrote this great, you, you, uh, what did you, what's in the review? And I the view review, it. yeah. Yeah, I loved it. That was amazing, you know. And, um, you know, I don't like, I don't like to, to do interviews, no. I'm, I'm doing it because it's fun for me. It, it, it takes me away from the music a bit. I can talk about music, but I don't have to be creative at the time. You know, that, that's cool. So uh, the, the most part I like is when, I, when the song comes together. When I got these little bits and snippets and bits and pieces, whatever, and I put it together, I say, whoa, this is great, you know? And then the excitement comes, you know, the, the fire inside myself, the flame is still burning. As long as it's burning, I will do it for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. I, I, I can I can feel that for you, writing album 20 or writing album one or writing album 50 is going to have the same level of excitement and it's going to have the same level of energy because you're, you're hyped about always making new music regardless right. of where you are in your career. Absolutely right. I totally agree. 100%. You, you have that fire in you. I, I can tell just the way you talk about music. You're very enthusiastic talking about the way you yes, create yes. music. And it's not like you're doing it just like, ah, you know, it's my job. I got to do it. No, no, you, no, no. You really love it. I fucking love it. You know, I, I can't do, no, I can't do anything better than this, you know, because this is, <laughs> this is, comes from my heart and my soul, you know, this is what I love, you know. Also, when, when we play live, I love it too. Because, you know, when, when you play to an audience, when we're headlining in Germany or Switzerland or Sweden, whatever, we're doing a headline show, a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand people, so there, you know, they pay for you because they love your music and what you're doing, you know. It's different when you play in a big festival. For example, we play in the Wacken Festival again. We're selling in front of 75, 80,000 people, but not everybody is there because they want to see you, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah. very hard to get them. And it's very tough sometimes, but it's good when they don't run away, you know, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're kind of packed in it's kind of hard for them to run away but i i, I know what you mean it's uh it's exciting to hit a stage i'm sure and playing your music and knowing that the people bought a ticket to go see you and to hear your music that must right. be super rewarding yes. and satisfying yeah absolutely you you mentioned johnny and and i have to ask you this i know he records the vocals on his own but does having a vocalist like johnny help you as a songwriter Oh, definitely yes, because I know his voice perfectly. I know which key, which key he can sing in, or which you know, which is a little strange for his voice. I, I ignore that, you know. So I said, okay, we don't do any song in that key, you know, you know. So I probably I know he's now part of the band till I think twenty six years. Mm -hmm. He's in ARP singing with me, so that's great. I know what he can do. I know what he loves, and that's very good. It's it's perfect. 
Over the years, what do you feel has become your biggest strength as a songwriter? Your biggest what? Your biggest strength as a songwriter. Oh, I don't know. I don't have a clue. You know, I, I really don't know. Because, you know, I, you know, it's very tough to, to put all these bits and pieces together to form a really good song out of it. But the strength is, is um, I can do it. I don't know why. It's The magic is in the air. It has to be right. But... It's always right. <laughs> it, it's it's in your blood. It's in your blood. You just it, right. it becomes almost second nature. Now yeah. I want to go back to that idea of adding multiple different riffs in a in a single song. At yeah. any point in time, did you're like, oh man, this riff is so good that it kind of deserves his own song? Did you ever think like that at all? Uh, no, you know, no, no. I'm 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 checking this out before when I listen to the bits and snippets and stuff. I say, whoa, this is this riff. This is so good. It's the main riff of a song, but sometimes I have a riff who said that could be an in between lick or in between riff. So I'm sorting it out before. Yeah. Do, do you use the same gear for the recording of the record as you will use when you go play the shows live, or do you have, do you change things a little bit? Uh, you know, normally when I'm in the studio, I'm I'm playing my guitar over an angle amplifier, a Powerball one, uh, together with a Pod XT. That's a very small effect thing where I program my own sound in it. And that's a combination. Sometimes it's more an angle, sometimes it's more the little thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, live, I'm always playing, only playing angle Powerball 1 amps. And uh, the gear is a little different because I have a, have a big step things on my <laughs> on the ground, you know, with all little kind of effects. Uh, yeah. But I don't use them in the studio because we, we do the effects we're using in the studio all coming out of the computer. Now, when you when it comes to the apart, apart from the Vava pedal, of course, yeah. Uh, when when it comes to the uh, singles that you guys released so far for this album, are are those your favorite songs, or or is there any other track that stands out that wasn't a single, but in your opinion, uh, it it has an important place for you? I'm sure all of them do, but something that yes. stands out. Yeah, no, you know, uh, the, mainly the the singles were, were um, selected by the record company because you, you know it's choose Guardian Angel as a first track because it's the most commercial one. It's a typical ARP style, which is not rep represented representative for the whole record, but they love it, and I love it too. You know, I said okay, that's a good idea. The second one is um, Guardian Angel, no fuck, um, darkest darkest hour, which is great too. I love it too, but you know. All the tracks, you know, they're all my little babies. When I pick one out, the others cry. So I can't pick <laughs> one out. <laughs> That's why the label is doing it for you. That's right. Yes. That's what. Yeah. That, that way you can look back at the songs and say, hey, I, I didn't pick you. They did it. So don't. That's right. That's right. The, the others are crying. I know Ankaya is crying. Like, oh, why, <laughs> didn't you, why didn't you choose me, baby? Master, please. <laughs> oh baby you're too long <laughs> yeah because I'm, I'm sure for you putting a record together all the the love all the hard work that goes into making these songs it, it's going to be really difficult to choose right you know one or two or three or four out of them because they all have a that special place for you it, it, exactly. is it even more difficult these days to put a set list together because oh yes. it, with every album release you you have to promote the record but fans want to hear yeah. the old stuff too I know that. Don't ask me. You know, it's so tough. It gets harder and harder because every every two years we got another album, you know. You know, and you are you can't do it right for everybody, you know. Always when, when you're ending the show and you're talking to some fans, we do some pictures outside, selfie, whatever, signing shit. Why didn't you play that song? That's my favorite. They say, Okay, I'm sorry. The other one saying, Oh no, that the other one, why didn't you play that? And then and sometimes they say, Oh, you always play the same set list. I say, Are you kidding? It's not the same set list, you know, it's different every time. But we have, of course, we have to play the the ARP main tracks, whatever, uh, which become a favorite of the fans, like Masquerade Ball, Casper Combination, the Matley. We have to do Rock to Nation, we have to do Fool Fool. We may not, we may not doing that. You know, the people, uh, they're right. When they're saying, why didn't you play that? That's one of your biggest tracks, you know, you have to play that. And they're right, so we have to play that. But the set list this time, you know, it's done already. I, I already did it for the tour in October when we're starting our headline show. Oh, no, in July, we're playing a few headline shows too. Uh, you know, I made a set list. I sent it to the band members and they said, yeah, that's cool, but <laughs> what about that song? What about this song? What about that? I said, okay, we can play everything. We're on stage for hours. 
you know, no, I don't have to sing four hours in a row. You have to do it, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> we, we made an agreement. I put some uh, um, recommendations from there that I put in the set list and they're fine with it. And they said, and Johnny said, it's the best set list we ever had. So I'm proud of it. I hope it works live. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. That That is, uh, I, I like your answer. You know, you just have to play guitar. There, He's the one that has to sing. So, man, we can put as many songs as you want. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You know, he's he's crying after one and a half three hours. He's singing, you know. Uh, I think I need a rest. And then I show tomorrow, I say we have five shows in a row. What's your problem? You want to do a three or four hour set list? No, 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 no. We have to reduce it. You know, we have to cut it down or whatever. It's working. Yeah, out. it's it's you're never gonna please everybody, not even your band members. So it's like yeah. it's 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 really difficult because your discography is so deep. Uh, and with every album that you release, obviously there's an expectation that you're going to play some of the new songs. Of so it's only going to get it's, it's only going to get more and more and more difficult. It's not going to be easier at all. I think it's just something you have to learn how to live with it. That hey, I, I can't make everybody happy. That's right, exactly. You know, now now every now and then I, I throw in a song which we haven't played live, which is an old track which we haven't played live, or only once or two times. I think on the last tour we did it with uh, Voodoo Nights. We throw a track in because we never played it live before, and then we did it for for two show for for uh, two set, two legs of the tour. Now it's gone. Now it's I took a, I picked up another song which was a recommendation by the band members, which we haven't played live since eight years. You know, wow. it's from the Night's Call record. They say, "Wow, this is great. You have to do it again." I said, "Okay, no problem. We're doing that." You know, every now and then we're changing, not the main things, but uh, a lot of things. Keeping things fresh, uh, yeah, you right. know, if, if everybody uh, of everybody that you've worked with in in the music business over the years, is there someone that you've never collaborated with that you would love to absolutely do a song, do something, do so, do something with? Unfortunately, it's still too late because he passed away. Ronnie Dio, Ronnie James Dio, you know, he was my favorite singer of all time, and he ever will be. I met him several times. You know, we supported him. On the last Heaven and Hell tour in Germany, we played all the shows with, with ARP. And I talked to him several times. He was such a great guy, very nice, you know. And and I talked with him. He he he, he talked to me and he said, probably I'll do another Stars, you know, like uh, we're Stars, 80, 86, I think the record came out. Mm -hmm. And I thought of you as, uh, of course, contributing a guitar solo in there, doing another video shoot and stuff. Well, I said, Ronnie, that would be nice, you know. But it never happened because he, he I think he died nine or ten ten a month after that you know okay so that would, would have been great but you know yeah that's one that's gonna have to wait for the afterlife oh yeah 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 we, every yeah we meet in heaven yeah yeah and then you can oh, an hour. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Man, I, or somewhere in never know but i'm sure they have a good <laughs> studio somewhere in there and you guys can jam out that song i think so yeah hopefully yeah, I, I I know uh, Richie Blackmore is a huge influence uh, on you. Uh, yeah. Do you remember the first time that you heard him play, and 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 what was about his playing style that influenced you so much? Oh, uh, you know, I can't tell exactly which song it was, but it was at the beginning of the nineteen seventies. I watched TV. You know, normally I, I was like into very kind of in Germany we call it Schlager music. It's like a very light pop music, whatever. And then I saw Deep Purple perform on TV and I saw Blackmore with a Fender Strat. I also, I know, I, I knew that Jimi Hendrix played a Fender Stratocaster too. And I loved Hendrix a bit, you know, at that time. And then I saw Blackmore and he said, oh, that's the same guitar like Hendrix. And he throw it around and say, wow, what is this? You got this magic aura, you know? And then I say, wow, that's really cool. Someday I want to do it too, you know? And then and then I followed Deep Purple, Lady Rainbow, and they were my biggest influences, you know? And I saw a UFO with Michael Schenker in the 70s. I think it was uh, in 1974, there was my first rock concert I attended. Uh, there was a UFO playing with Michael Schenker and Paul Chapman at the same time. They had two guitar players. The Phenomenal record just came out, and I, I stood there with an the open mouth and said, Jesus Christ, holy shit, this is amazing, you know? That was really cool, yeah. Wow, wow. What, what a story. What a what an origin story for you to have those kind of experiences and uh and to see yeah, that yeah. considering how much they are an influence on you and now you are an influence on other guitar players what what advice would you have for an aspiring guitar player that's that's getting started right now 
Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a tough question. I, I really don't have an advice. Maybe, you know, sometimes it's good not to copy any guy too much. You know, when you're into Eddie Van Halen, don't do tapping things all the time because that's there was another guy and he was perfect on that. You, you never can talk that. So find your own style. Sometimes it's hard, you know. For example, uh, when I started, I, I didn't only have Richie Blackmore as an influence. I would say, I, as I said, Michael Schenker, Jimmy Hendrix, Uli, John Roth, you know, all these guys from the 70s, which I grew up listening to, you know. And then you have to find the combination and put your own little feeling to it and create your own style if it's possible. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult thing to find your own your own personal touch, if you will. Because you yeah. see that even in music these days. I mean, I don't know how much you listen to modern metal bands and metal music it uh, seems like it seems like everybody's copying everybody else instead of trying to be better than the next guy you know what i mean yeah, yes yeah absolutely you know I, to be honest i don't listen very very much to to a new metal bands or whatever I, i only barely nearly not not listening to music at all at the moment you know sometimes the only time i really listen to music when i'm driving my car i got this special a radio station where i can say oh that's the next I don't know how you call it when you're driving too fast, the light shines up. I don't know. I forgot the right English word for that. But they're telling me, oh, be, uh, be careful at that corner. There's a, you know, don't. Oh, don't... a speed camera or something. Yeah, speed camera, exactly. But, you know, normally I'm only listening to bands from the 70s. When I really listen to them, they're pulling really loud. But sometimes you know, it happens that I, I really like the new Bruce Dickinson record, the solo record. Fucking amazing. I love it, you know. It's great, but you not no new metal bands I don't listen to because sometimes I hear them on the radio and say, what a piece of crap, you know. So I, they're, they're not playing guitar solos, just three notes, and what is it, you know? <laughs> sometimes sometimes the, sometimes the vocals are so bad, I say, Jesus Christ, that's get go sing on the toilet, but not on the on the record, you know. <laughs> I, love, I love the way you put it because the, the other day my son and I we were watching a music video and 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 the song only had like like I think three notes max and it was on repeat like the whole time and yeah. and, and he was like this is the most boring and uninspiring guitar playing like he said to me I can teach that song to somebody who's never played a guitar before in five minutes yeah because it, it, there's not much to it there's really not much to it so I, I, I mean but sometimes it's good when you play only three or five notes but you have to be you have to get the special feeling you know i don't care much about technical being technically perfect on the guitar i am not you know and i never will be but i don't want to you know i express my my inner feeling through the guitar playing and that's fine enough i think yeah but but that brings this other uh, it brings this other flavor to the way the sound comes across into the way the guitar it doesn't feel as robotic it doesn't feel as right. as as, as predictable for a lack right. of a for a lack right. of a better word so I, i love that you said that because uh you know <laughs> i i hear a lot a lot of that too these days uh one last question for you you mentioned the touring so the album comes out june 14th when are you hitting the road when are you playing some shows and where are you playing some shows oh jesus christ that's another good question uh, i can't remember everything i know that we are starting rehearsal on the uh... 9th of July to the 11th of July and on the 12th of July we're flying to Bulgaria we are the co-headliner on a festival in Bulgaria on the 13th I think uh, Mr. Big will be headlining and we're playing we're, we're second last so I don't know so I think Vandenberg is playing before whatever whatever I don't know I can't remember and then uh, we're playing two headlining shows in Germany 17th, 18th or 19th of July I'm not sure mm -hmm. in the south of Germany Then we're playing uh, the Wacken Festival at the beginning of August. We're playing another festival in Sweden. We're playing a lot of festivals in the summer. I think eight, nine, ten, or eleven. Wow. I don't know. And yeah, and then we're on the road, starting our headlining tour in October, starting uh, October sixth or fourth. I know. I don't know. I think October sixth, which um, runs through the whole October. We're playing in Germany, in Switzerland, as in Sweden, three shows. We play. Uh, I don't know. I forgot everything. I don't know. <laughs> you got a busy schedule. Yeah, it is definitely yes, and then we're this doing the second leg of the tour will be next year, between February and April. I don't know. I'm not sure about the exact dates right now. Wow! So you're going to be very busy following this album. Yes, I am. Yeah, and yeah. of course, and of course, my record company asked me, Axel, what can we do next year? We have to bring something out. I said, What the fuck? <laughs> we just released the record, you know. Yes, the album is not even out yet. 
Yeah, I think the uh, life record, no, it's a record company, no, life record, they have enough life, life records, so if they don't need a life record, they don't want another ballad, maybe I do a half cover album, half new song, I don't know, I, I, I'm i not sure at the moment, so, but this will be a thing of next year. I'm sure with your cell phone around recording those riffs uh, when you wake up, uh, yeah. you'll, you'll come up with some ideas for next year, but in the meantime, you have an album coming out June 14, right, uh, Raisin Symbol. Uh, coming out on Steam Hammer SPV, you got a whole summer of festivals. You got some massive tour dates. So for yeah. those in Europe, do do not mix, uh, do do not take the opportunity to miss seeing Axel Rudy Pell live, shredding on his guitar, playing more than three notes. Go see this this guy. <laughs> Go see this guy. <laughs> Go see this guy live. Do not miss this opportunity. And uh, Axel, thank you very much for you taking the time to chat with me today. I always <laughs> appreciate talking to you. It's always so much fun. Thank you. My pleasure. My appreciation very much. Thank you very much. You're great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.